right. Hello. Good morning. So uh, I guess we started out general. Now we're going to get a bit more focused with my particular talk. And here I'll be discussing how we at the University of Western Ontario are using behavioral genetic methodology in order to expand on this new personality cluster known as the dark triad. And I'll just jump right in and I'll motor through it really quickly for the sake of time, so please bear with me. So it was in 2002 that Paul Lucen Williams first introduced to us this uh, idea of a dark triad of human personality. And the dark triad essentially consists of three traits that are expressed subclinically and that are characterized by socially malevolent traits. So specifically, we have Machiavellianism, which entails uh, socially malevolent, malevolent behavior and also behavior that's directed at manipulating others. We then have narcissism, which entails um, more of a superiority or a sense of entitlement and superiority. And then we have psychopathy, which is defined by a combination of more thrill-seeking paired with low empathy. Um, so in their initial analyses of these three traits, Paul and Williams noted that there were um, moderate relatively moderate correlations between them as well as unique associations between each of the dark triad traits and additional personality variables. So the general conclusion drawn from these seminal studies was that the dark triad traits, although they overlap, are unique personality constructs within themselves. So we found this particular research interesting not only because it presented us with a new personality cluster, which is always exciting, but also because it provided a springboard for additional research. And specifically, we were encouraged to expand on this idea of a dark triad in order to potentially create this comprehensive framework of antisocial personality traits as expressed at a subclinical level. So essentially, this would be a first step in systematically exploring that gray area that falls between supposedly adjusted or normal personality functioning on one end of the spectrum and then traits that fall within the cutoff of a clinical diagnosis on the other. And in order to do this, we decided to use behavioral genetic methodology and twin studies in particular. And this approach is good because, like more classical analyses, it does allow us to look at the phenotypic relations between traits, so it lets us know whether or not they're significantly related. However, it has the added benefit of also letting us know the extent to which these phenotypic relations are attributable to common genetic and or common environmental factors. So putting this in another way, it allows us to test whether traits are related and then why they may be related. So it answers the question of etiology and heritability in addition to that question of association. So first we started by looking at the dark triad in relation to existing personality models just to see how we can fit it within these models. So we started with an obvious point looking at the dark triad in relation to the big five model of personality. And the big five is the conventional framework of personality right now and it does suggest that Individual differences in all human functioning can be attributed to five overarching dimensions, and it's the five that are listed on the slide. So for our particular study, we had 139 adult twin pairs from North America, and these completed the MAC-4, the Narcissistic Personality Inventory, and the Self-Report Psychopathy Scale, looking at individual differences in Machiavellianism, Narcissism, and Psychopathy, respectively. And then they also completed the Neo Personality Inventory, revised to get the individual differences in those big five dimensions. So with regards to our phenotypic associations, we saw that there were significant associations between all of those dark triad traits and some of those big five variables. And just to highlight the significant correlations for Machiavellianism, it, uh, there was a significant positive association with neuroticism and then a significant negative association with conscientiousness. For narcissism, there was a significant positive association with extroversion and a significant negative association was seen between psychopathy and conscientiousness. As well, there was a significant negative association between all of those dark triad variables and then the big five trait of agreeableness. So based on all of these associations in general, we, in general, we see that antisocial um, element coming through with regards to the big five, uh, sorry, with regards to the dark triad. In terms of the behavioral genetic element, we saw that all of these uh, phenotypic correlations were primarily attributable to genetic and non-shared environmental factors correlated. So this tells us that there appears to be a considerable overlap in the genes that are affecting the co-occurrence of these particular traits. With regards to this study overall, in addition to confirming the fact that the dark triad really um, is antisocial in nature, what we're seeing is that we can situate it to some extent within the big five model. So it is a valid construct based on how we understand personality as it now stands. And furthermore, we can say that the effects that we're seeing are genuine because of that heritable component coming through. Now, because these associations were pretty uh, moderate, 
we decided to look at the dark triad in relation to the supernumerary personality inventory, which we thought of as an alternative framework to the big five. And we can call it that because the SPI assesses 10 traits, so the 10 traits that are listed on the slide, that fall outside of the big five model. So essentially the sampling space of the SPI is unique from that of the big five. And we wanted to see whether we could fit the dark triad within this framework in particular. So here we had 456 adult twin pairs, again from North America. They completed the same three dark triad measures as did the twins in study one, and they also now completed the SPI, looking at individual differences in those 10 traits in the previous slide. In this case, we were seeing many, many significant phenotypic correlations between all the dark triad traits and just about all of the SPI scales. Um, These would be the, the positive correlations that we noted, and these would be the negative significant phenotypic correlations. And to put it another way, these are the only non-significant correlations that we noted between all of those dark triad measures and then the SPI scales. So once again, we see that antisocial nature of the dark triad cluster coming through. With regards to the behavioral genetic analyses, once again, we are seeing that these phenotypic correlations were primarily attributable to common genetic and common non-shared environmental factors. So in terms of the overall results, what we were seeing is that there seems to be a very strong link between the dark triad and this novel SPI framework. Um, And we see the strength of the uh, association based on the correlations that we're seeing and more so based on that heritable component coming through. And so because of this, we can say that perhaps conventional personality models like the big five that I showed earlier, perhaps these aren't adequately capturing the complexity of antisocial behavior as we know it. And because of that, a refinement of the current framework of personality and specifically the big five may be necessary so we can capture all of this antisocial behavior and personality that we're seeing. So before, because we wanted to use the dark triad as a springboard for additional research, we thought it best that we first understand the dark triad as it now stands and begin to build an association network around it. So essentially, we just want to explore relationships between the dark triad traits and existing personality variables just so we see what we are presently measuring. So we've done this in several studies, but I'll only talk about two for the sake of time. And for the sake of time, I'll only talk about the phenotypic relations that we noted. And then if you have additional questions about any of it, feel free to talk to me at any point in the conference and I'll discuss more. So I'll be looking at the dark triad in relation to humor styles as measured by the humor styles questionnaire and trait emotional intelligence as measured by the trait emotional intelligence questionnaire. And we had about 200 adult twin pairs for both of these studies. With regards to these phenotypic associations for humor styles first, we saw that Machiavellianism and psychopathy were correlating significantly and positively with those negative in, with those negative humor styles. So essentially what this tells us is that individuals scoring high on these dark triad traits tend to use humor in sarcastic ways or as put-downs or even in, to make self-disparaging remarks about the self. So essentially they're using humor in a negative antisocial way, which kind of fits with how we understand the dark triad. What we saw on the other hand, however, was that narcissism was correlating significantly and positively with positive humor styles. So in this case, we see that narcissists tend to use humor in order to build friendships or in order to uh, create this optimistic outlook on life when times get tough. So it's more of a pro-social approach. With regards to trait emotional intelligence, it's the same pattern of correlations. Here, Machiavellianism and psychopathy is correlating significantly and negatively with global trait EI. So essentially, these individuals have low self-perceived emotion-related abilities. On the other hand, narcissism correlated significantly and positively. So here, narcissistic individuals tend to be very good at uh, musing, understanding, and processing emotional information. So... Over the course of these studies, and this was reflected in other studies as well, what we see is that Machiavellianism and psychopathy have these very antisocial patterns of low, uh, correlations with various traits, and the narcissism tends to have narcissism tends to have more pro-social leanings. And we can probably attribute this to the measure that we're using, the narcissistic personality inventory, to assess narcissism. It seems to be the case that this particular measure is very heavily loaded with pro-social items. And these particular items may not necessarily be reflective of the trait as we want to measure it and as we want to understand it. So perhaps we need to change the measure that we're presently using to measure narcissism, add in these antisocial traits um, before we move forward and create this framework that we eventually want to create. So in terms of overall, what do these studies show us? First of all, we see that we've been able to fit the dark triad within the Big Five model, which does validate it to some extent as a personality cluster that we want to explore further. 
But we do see that we've been able to better fit this drug triad model within the SPI framework. And this, as I mentioned, suggests that it could be the case that the, dark, the big five, as it now stands, is not capturing that complexity of antisocial traits that we want to capture. Um, furthermore, what we can say, just going from that, is that we need to revise the way that we are structuring personality if we want to begin to understand antisocial human behavior in more detail. And based on a relation, uh, relationship studies looking at the dark triad in relation to other personality factors, we need to first revise how we're measuring the dark triad if we want to use it as a springboard for additional research. So what you're seeing here is a series of first steps towards classifying and clarifying the dark side of human behavior. And as we move forward with this, we need to use behavioral genetic methodology, not only so we can look at associations between traits, but so that we can answer questions of heritability, ideology, and uh, potentially validity. And so, thank you so much.